Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're gonna to be going over Experience Cloud, the tenants of Experience Cloud, what are some of the use cases, what are the benefits of Experience Cloud, and how to get certified within Experience Cloud. Let's jump into what actually is Experience Cloud. Experience Cloud also used to be called Community Cloud. I wanna say it was like two, three years ago when they changed the name of this. So if you're looking for tutorials or resources on how to use Experience Cloud, I would also check under Community Cloud and this might help you get where you're wanting to go. So Experience Cloud is a way for you to create different websites or different things to interact with your internal team or your external team. So there are a lot of different use cases with Experience Cloud and it's extremely customizable, but I would say that one of the really great awesome things about Experience Cloud is that it's built off of Salesforce. So if you're already using Salesforce for your your daily workings of your company or your organization, then you can easily add Experience Cloud on top of this and you can create different I hate to use this in the explanation, different experiences for your customers. So let's talk a little bit about the use cases and you'll kind of understand a little bit more of what I'm talking about here when I say experiences. So Experience Cloud can be used for an external facing website to uh, show your customers what you have as far as product offering goes, it can be a way for you to host different meetups for your company group. It can be a way for you to create different portals for your company or for your organization. You can take payments through this. You can do, sometimes you can do shopping through this depending on if you wanna hook this up to Commerce Cloud. But essentially it's a way for you to create a website that connects back to Salesforce that's built off of Salesforce. So then you don't have to go out and create like a WordPress site or a Wix site or one of those other websites and then have to connect those two or use another third party tool. So if you're already using Salesforce, it makes some sense to uh, use Experience Cloud just depending on your scenario or your situation. Now I've seen uh, Experience Cloud used for different things. A couple of years ago we actually finished out our basement and we were trying to find carpeting and so what I noticed is when we went to Home Depot we ordered carpet through them and uh, they used an Experience Cloud site to create the different tools and the different interactions that we had with Home Depot in filling out that information and then getting that order statement and also connect back to CPQ or Revenue Cloud as it's sometimes known now to create a quote of roughly how much it would cost for us to finish out the flooring in our basement. I know it's also used for portals and for different use cases. Uh, my husband, Jeremy, who's also works on Salesforce, he often is on the channel, so most of you probably know him. He has created different Experience Cloud websites for different government organizations, so then their constituents can log complaints or their constituents can say, hey, I am having an issue with this particular situation. I can't really go into too many details about it, but he was able to create a portal where constituents were able to log on and create an account with them and then log complaints and then have that be serviced based upon different needs. While this is its own cloud within Salesforce, it can touch so many other clouds like Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, Revenue Cloud, CPQ, which are kind of the same things. It can connect back to the knowledge base. It can connect to a lot of different things. And so it's pretty versatile as far as a cloud goes. So let's kind of go into some of these core functionalities of it. Now, it's like you're designing your own website and hopefully I should be able to uh, pop up a little screen here of what it looks like when you are creating an experience cloud and, and navigating around it. One use case of it is community management and that's why it was called communities. Now they changed it because there were so many other use cases that they were using this for, but community management where you are managing different projects possibly and managing different relationships. So you could create a portal to manage your different partner relationships with people who are working with the company side by side. You can also use this for employees, possibly like an HR management community where you have your employees log in to see possibly how many days left of PTO they have or how many days left of sick leave they have, what company holidays they are, see if they're getting their W-2 or their W-4 soon, that kind of thing. Now there isn't like an HR specific cloud, but I have seen people that have taken and created like a whole custom cloud within Salesforce for recruiting and for HR. So that is a possibility. Another one is going to be content management. Now, 
this is going to be a lot of like millennial and Gen Z stuff where you can create different pieces of content. So I'm thinking specifically like blog articles or if your team is creating videos or creating different posts, then you can link that back to Experience Cloud or you can host it on Experience Cloud. And this way your customers can see like, hey, this is what this company is about. This is what they sell. This is what they do. Another thing here is that you can make sure that the website looks both clean on whatever mode that your customers typically view your website from or your experience from. Some customers will want to view it from a mobile device or an iPad. Others will want to do a laptop. Others will want to do a PC. And you wanna make sure that it looks good and clean and works for your customers based upon whatever mode they are reaching out to your company and looking at your site from. Another really great use case here is that it can be used as a self-service kind of area for cases and for service cloud. Let's say that you have gym equipment and that's what you sell. And so sometimes you'll have issues with your gym equipment and people aren't sure how to use the gym equipment or you might have a certain error that pops up with your gym equipment you can create a self-service portal where customers can say, hey, a lot of people are having the same issue and the company created a help article for that. And you're able to hopefully self-service and get your issue without having to really contact a human, which is nice for both the customer service team because they don't have another case that they need to manage. And it's nice for the customer because then they don't have to reach out to another person and wait for them to get back to them. They can fix their own issue and it really is great for everyone. You can also connect this back and create a bot support or chat support where first you're creating a bot and the bot is trying to help them. This goes back to Agent Force. That is a newer feature of Salesforce that you can customize to chat with your customers and hopefully give them solutions to their issues. But it's also really great for chatting with customers and making sure that you can hopefully give them the right information within chatting with them online. Now you may need to select different hours for your chat support and notify your customers of that because I've definitely been on websites where they haven't and it's been kind of arduous of like, hey, when is someone going to reach back out to me? I can't really do anything else with my life until I fix this one solution. So making sure that you make it obvious of, hey, our chat support is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, Eastern time. That would be really helpful. Let's kind of wrap this up as far as the basic things that Experience Cloud does. I... <laughs> I don't know if this is a good characterization of it, but Experience Cloud does whatever the heck you want it to do. Um, it can connect to pretty much anything within Salesforce, whatever your use case is, you could probably find a way to do it with Experience Cloud uh, for reaching out to customers, for creating portals for customers, for I know my HOA, that my homeowners association that deals with, we've got a neighborhood pool and we've got um, a clubhouse and a gym that's associated with our neighborhood. They use Experience Cloud for the issues, for their clubhouse calendar, for their community calendar of different events that are happening within the neighborhood, for making sure that people are being mindful of the different HOA roles and for reporting your neighbors if you need to, if their car is in front of your house 24 seven and it smells really bad. Not that I'm talking from personal experience, but it is a way for you to do that. And that's one of the use cases I've seen. You could use it for, for billing and connecting it back to billing within Salesforce. And it's extremely customizable. So pretty much whatever you want it to do, it can do. Just make sure that you have some of the right permissions because if you don't have the right permissions, it can open up your whole org to some security issues. So please, 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 please test out everything within this and make sure that you are um, doing this above board and that everything is safe and secure. But let's talk a little bit about the certifications that you can get with Experience Cloud. So I would always, always, always recommend the first two certifications that you should get to be the associate certification as well as the admin certification. And then from there, you can go into Experience Cloud Consultant certification and get a specific certification that is just for Experience Cloud to show that, hey, you have at least this level of knowledge, like a baseline level of knowledge to show that you can work on Experience Cloud. Let me see if there are any prerequisites for this one. Okay, so there is one prerequisite of the admin certification to get this Experience Cloud. So it's going to be a 60 multiple choice question and I would gander to say that it's one of the mid, it's not like a new certification, but it's not like an old certification. So it's in that mid range. So I would guess to say it probably has a one out of four. Don't quote me on that. And the passing score is going to be around 65%. Now this can change based upon whenever Salesforce changes up their certifications. Um, they don't 
update them too regularly in my experience. I know on App Builder sometimes you might find stuff on Process Builder in a couple years after they've retired that product. So just keep that in mind that you might need to look at some older resources to get the full breadth of that certification. But that is going to be Experiences Cloud. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at Emily Call MBA. You can check out our certification prep courses on Salesforce Upskill, Udemy Business, and LinkedIn Learning. But thank you so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one.